Hello, it is Tuesday, September 28th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword, Daily Solve. And thank you so much to everybody who extended your condolences to me on the seeming loss of my streak yesterday, my run of solved crosswords. Um, This name suffices, commented to say, my streak showed back up about 20 minutes after my solve. Hope everyone else's did as well. And I can confirm that my streak did indeed uh, return. So I am at a 916 day streak, hopefully soon incremented to 917. (laughs) So thank you again for for all of the well wishes regarding my streak. Um, And also there was a comment I wanted to address from Gabriel Mangold, who commented and said, Hey, Chris, I'm a big fan. However, I think it's time you address this criticism. Why do you only do the New York Times crossword? Because I know all about the primacy of the New York Times crossword in certain circles. I come from New York Jewish heritage, but I really think there's equal challenge to be had in other crossword puzzles like the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and other regional papers. And I think there's also value in the slightly different lexicons being used, explored in those other papers. What say you? I think that's a fair enough question. And I, the answer is, um, uh, I, guess, I guess it's sort of tautological in the sense that I solved the New York Times crossword because I solved the New York Times crossword. It's the one It's the one I've been solving for a while. And so it's the one that I do. And I would love to explore many more crosswords myself and on this channel. And perhaps in some future version of my life in which I have uh, much more time to spend on this channel, uh, I would do that. And hopefully with the Patreon, I can do some bonus puzzles. And it, well, I'm certainly planning on doing some bonus puzzles in the Patreon. And maybe I'll branch out beyond New York Times and some of those that certainly I think would be a fun thing to do. Someone recently recommended me The New Yorker, which I guess isn't a big step away geographically, but um, uh, I just don't have time. If I'm going to do The New York Times every day, which is my intention because it's it's my personal habit and hobby, I'm not going to stop doing that. So if I'm going to do that one every day anyway, I simply don't have time to add in other crosswords, at least not these days. But that's a, it would be a nice aspiration, wouldn't it? If this could, if I could devote <laughs> somehow more time to this, we'll just have to see what happens in the long term. Anyway, uh, quickly, I will mention again that the Patreon campaign is live. We're actually coming pretty close to, I think, 100 supporters on the Patreon, which is extremely exciting. So thank you so much to the almost 100 of you who have signed up for that. That's a way you can support me on a monthly basis and get some bonus content in return, as well as some other benefits. There's uh, one of the tiers, for instance, gets an exclusive mug after a couple months, and I'll be tweaking the design via polls among those uh, people who are eligible. Anyway, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve, and the link is in in the description field under each video. So let's move on to some comments left on yesterday's puzzle, yesterday's very belated puzzle. Here's a pretty straightforward one. Umbra points out that Leif, which I said Leif, L-E-I-F, the explorer, Leif Erikson, Leif is pronounced more like Leif than Leif. So that was a good correction for me. Thank you so much, Umbra. And Andy Hills points out Aggies, the sports team name, is a somewhat common college sports team or mascot name for schools which began as agricultural schools, ag schools. Larger schools, which still use the nickname, are Texas A&M, formerly the Agricultural and Mechanical College of Texas, UC Davis, and Utah State. Good, solid piece of knowledge there. Lucas Roca points out, with respect to Taco Tuesdays, in 2019, LeBron James tried to trademark the phrase Taco Tuesday because it was a tradition in his household and he would post videos and pictures on all his social media uh, of himself and his family eating tacos. The trademark was denied, obviously, yes. And let's see, I think that's all I had actually. So um, yes, I believe that's all that I bookmarked. So let's get on with the Tuesday puzzle. This is a crossword that has been constructed by Megan Morris, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And we should expect this to be a relatively gentle puzzle. There should be a theme, and in fact, I can see through the gauzy privacy veil some circled letters, which do hint at some kind of theme. We'll have to see what it is. Ready to get started? Okay. 
Ah, speaking of tacos, carne blank taco option. This is carne asada, marinated grilled beef dish uh, in uh, common in Mexican food. Delicious, delicious dish. Actress Jessica, Jessica Alba, recognize. Germ could be a seed, germ of an idea, for instance, seed of an idea. Surrounded by could be amid, and let's check the crosses to be sure. To tack on is to add, indeed. Uh, here we have C4 down, which says, with 14 across, longtime CNN host. Uh, not sure offhand, but let's check the five down. To rile up could be annoy. Um, that's all I'm saying right this second, but let's uh, look at the 17 across. Refusing to understand. Well, it could be being something. Oh, right. Sorry. It's not annoy. Rile up is anger. <laughs> The much more obvious one here. So this looks like Don Lemon. That looks like the, the by far the most plausible fill for the name of the CNN host. And that name rings a bell. I don't know that I would have pegged that person as a CNN host. I don't remember who they are, but the name is familiar. So I'm going to say it's fine. All right, let's go back to the acrosses. Ebbed, ebbed could be waned. Something has, is decreasing over time. Um, could be waned. Here we have co-founder of the NAACP and author of The Souls of Black Folk. Oh, this must be W.E.B. Du Bois, I believe is how it's pronounced. And works in the Galleria della Uffizi. This is the Uffizi Gallery in Italy. Um, art. Art. Uh, what is art in plural of art in Italian? Arti? I? Let's see. Like Prince William vis-a-vis -vis Prince Harry. Oh, Elder. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Making a mess over here. Uh, elder, Prince William is older, the elder of Prince Harry. So when you see vis-a-vis, -vis, this is probably obvious, but just to, just to make sure everyone is aware, vis-a-vis -vis means with respect to. So Prince William with respect to Prince Harry is an elder. It's not saying older, the, the, the adjective. It's saying what he is with respect to Prince Harry. He is the elder with respect to Prince Harry. So that's what that's, that is what that is. Refusing to understand is obtuse. If one refuses to understand, they're being obtuse. Uh, island nation, that's the world's smallest republic. Nauru, I would think. A certain curve could be an S curve spelled out phonically. And here we have backspace through, say, something I often do on these crossword solves is I backspace through answers to erase them. A strong connection as to one's land. Oh, a deep something, deep ties doesn't fit. Um, I don't know. We'll keep going for now. Language from which bandana comes must be Urdu based on these crosses. That's interesting. Alero or Aurora informally. So this is an or which means it's singular, but in this case, that's slightly misleading because the, this word is going to have an S at the end, Olds, for Oldsmobile, defunct car manufacturer that once produced the Alero and Aurora uh, models. Here we have organizations supporting mom and pop stores. With the SB, that looks like small business something, could be small business association or organization or Agency, I'm not sure if this is a specific thing or a general category of thing like the PTA, Parent Teacher Association, which isn't a single organization, but a category of them. Anyway, let's go back to the acrosses and we'll make our way through. Uh, B-Ways, Broadway's blank Miz, Les Miz. Didn't really need to abbreviate Broadway there um, because Les, L-E-S, is a complete French word, but uh, maybe they did that because Miz is an abbreviation of Misolab, even though we didn't need to know that for the answer. Well, I guess we need to know that for the answer, but we didn't need to use it in the answer. Anyway, let's move on. Animating, livening up or something, maybe? Could that, uh, maybe. That's that's pretty long, so it's fairly speculative. So let's, let's confirm some things. Actor Idris with an OBE. That's the Order of the British Empire. That's Idris Elba. Lose traction could be to skid, as in a car to skid along the road because you've lost traction. And type is ilk, that, that tracks. Uh, skid. So what is this? Organization enforcing RICO laws. Okay, I don't think this is, I don't think this is livening up after all. 
This looks like the FBI to me. I don't remember what RICO stands for. It's it's some sort of organized crime legislation. I don't remember. I think I don't remember what it stands for. Anyway, let's move on. To beg is to plead. So here we have animating life of oh, life giving, maybe. Oh, and actually we have some uh we're starting to fill some of these themes. I'm not going to put this in yet because I'm still not certain. But we're starting to fill some of these theme cells. Not not very many of them yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, and here we have strip sails and ropes from. Un-something. When we strip something, we un-something it. Untie. I don't know. Un-sails and ropes. So this would be on a ship. Unrig? Is it rigging a ship? Is that what this is? So this could be life-giving, actually, with unrig. And, oh, strong connection is to one lance's deep roots, of course. Yes, yes, obviously. Okay, and here in the reign of Nero, uh, well, it'll be a Roman numeral, of course. So, I mean, it could be L-I-I, L-I-V, L-I-X. Targets a lot, L meaning 50, right? So um, 52, 54, 59 could be any of those. Targets of cleanses, pores. Toxins. Toxins would allow LIX. Let's try that. What is this? L may do I have something else wrong, maybe? Not sure yet. Abbreviation on a wrapper. Oh, maybe this is maybe something is wrong. NT doesn't look very good. Abbreviation on a wrapper. Would be some sort of nutritional factors and nutritional factor. I don't know. Let's keep going. Six-sided state. Um, well, if we assume this to be a state, an American state, in four letters, with starting with U, it could be Utah. Air Force Academy student. Could be a cadet. Air Force cadet sounds pretty, pretty correct to me. Put in a movie role would be to cast, to cast someone in a role in a film. Bothered a lot could be eight at. Here, when a football might be hiked. On two? Do you count to two and hike a football? I don't I don't know. Uh, let's try it. Abbreviation on a wrapper. Ah, I see. Net weight. Net weight. N-T-W-T. Net weight. Okay, there we go. So this could be toxins, in fact. Let's put that back. Through could be via, as in uh, via a given route or, you know, via a building. You go through that building. And actually, that would work with life-giving. So let's go ahead and put that in, fill in via, and then keep going. Scientist who said, our planet, planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. Uh, Carl Sagan surely said that. Jennifer, who wrote A Visit from the Goon Squad, that is, an, that is the novelist, Jennifer Egan. Um, let's see, do we, have we been skipping anything? Oh, here. 1989 Spike Lee title offering good, if vague, advice. That is do the right Thing. That is a great film. And here we have American Blank Warrior. Sure looks like American Ninja Warrior, which seems like something of a contradiction in terms, but fair enough. Actress Sone of The Wire, Sonia Sone. She played, I don't remember the name, <laughs> one of the detectives. I don't remember the, her character's name, I mean. Digs Up, in a way, is Hose, as in in a garden. And jumping back up, so we're not skipping too far ahead. To make amends for is to atone for... Fires up could be, I don't know, sets ablaze or something. It's It's got a question mark. So the fires up, ordinarily, we would see that as mean energizes, but the pun perhaps means commits an act of arson, basically. Um, sometimes the word play means take it more literally as opposed to less literally, as in this case, if it indeed is sets ablaze, which we will have to confirm. A samovar, oh, look at that. A samovar came up in the crossword the other day. A samovar is a tea urn, I believe a Russian tea urn, um, so tea urn, let's <laughs> fill that in. Part of a wedding ceremony is a ring is used in a wedding ceremony with those crosses, I would think. To rend is to tear apart or to tear into, actually, could be as well. Although I'd be sort of surprised if it were into when we already have on to, but you never know. You never know. Fort Blank, what's new, the latest, maybe? Does that work here? Much requested airplane seat, aisle. A ring is taken down the aisle. Does that mean anything, or is that just a coincidence? 
This looks like angle. Relationship of the circled letters to the apt words they connect to in the puzzle. Ah, yes, this is angle spelled upwards and in reverse. So this is going to be angle. And I will listen to the pleas of my commenters to go ahead and fill out the theme cells once I have a pretty good idea of what they are. And I have a pretty good idea this is angle. So this could be the latest with that E, in fact. One of football's Mannings. I've certainly heard of Eli Manning. So there we go. Sometimes I've heard of a sports guy. Sport uh, store with a one-way route through its cavernous space. Ikea uses a one-way uh, system of traversal. Aliases informally, and it could be AKAs, also known as. Um, so also known as, obviously, is, I guess, an adjective, but is used as a noun in this case, which is why it can be pluralized. Like paths of missiles. Arcs, I would think, but that doesn't fit. What is this? To change is to alter something. Like many bridal veils, ah, like the privacy veil of the crossword before we are ready to start is gauzy. I would, I would think that is, or maybe I just think that because I say it so often on this video. Motorola phones, razors, the Motorola razor, that was the very, the, the old flat flip phone, I think. Much mail, abbreviation. Much mail is letters, LTRs, it's pretty straightforward. One of a resume pair. So you might think that this would be uh, referring to an element that one includes in a resume or a CV. But in fact, I think what it means is it is alluding to the fact that there are two, there's a pair of accented E's, two acute accents, that when the accent goes in that direction, it is acute an acute accent. And that, that clearly ties in, oh, I see. Oh, this is a very clever theme. I probably could have gotten this earlier if I'd been looking, but I sort of glossed over it. So we have acute accent, but there's also the concept of an acute angle, an angle uh, that measures fewer than 90 degrees. And we can see that the word angle forms an acute angle with the word acute in this answer. So surely that will be the same here. Yes, we have right intersecting with the word angle, forming a right angle. And then I, well, we ha we'll have obtuse as well, right? Yes. Here we have obtuse forming an obtuse angle, which is an angle that measures more than 90 degrees with this word angle. And it looks like in this case, the E is the end of the word angle in this case, and that's what meets the other word. And that, that holds true with the acute here in the case of right meets in the middle. Uh, fair enough. Okay, so that was pretty good. A uh, nice, clever little geometric theme. So what was this? Ah, yes, we had tear, and we can confirm now that is tear apart. Romeo and Juliet had one, a tryst. It might be jacked up. You might jack up a car to do some work on the underbody. A forensic abbreviation. This might be CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, which is also the name of a television program. I was trying to get to here. Oh, right. Like paths of missiles. Oh, I see. Yes. It wasn't arcs, but shouldn't have been arcs because it's saying like paths of missiles. It is describing the paths of missiles. They are arced. Cockpit array could be dials, an array of dials in a cockpit. Periods in the NBA quarters, I guess. Many sports do that. Spanish 101 verb. I'm not sure. I don't know. This is the infinitive, I assume, and I don't know what that is in this case. Blank page, a help source, could be an FAQ, frequently asked questions. And seriously uptight, anal, as an anal retentive, cheese in a Greek salad is feta, and so we have the Spanish 101 verb estar, uh, from which I guess esta is uh, conjugated. So to wit, abbreviation, um... Oh boy, this is the, this is one of those ones that's on the tip of my tongue, and I'm not I'm not getting there. That's fine. Actress de Armas, I don't know, don't know this person. I don't think Derby cocktail or Darby cocktail. Oh, in this case, Derby. It would be Darby if it were somewhere in the UK, but in this case, it's not. It's the Kentucky Derby, which means this is a mint julep, a cocktail, a mint julep. Uh, boy, there's very few things. There are very few things better than the smell of fresh mint. Really, an incredible. 
wonderful aroma. All right, let's see. Language that may be used in 56, 56 down, and then 56 is simply C55 down. So what language starts with a J in four letters? It'll be so obvious when I see it, but I'm not seeing it yet. A bit of firefighting equipment. An axe, I suppose. Oh, Unix? The operating system Unix? And then the language would be a computer language, which is, I didn't have that in mind at all, so I wasn't even trying to think, but uh, must be Java. Yes, and then to wit is, v yes. Uh, I actually don't know if this is pronounced V or Viz, because... Um, didn't we have vis-a-vis -vis in here somewhere? I think we did, yes. Oh, that's different, Never mind. That's V-I-S, okay. So maybe that's not related. But to wit, vi I mean, you do see this. You do see this written in, in text to indicate to wit, but, I, uh, but again, as it says, it's an abbreviation, and I don't know that I've ever actually said it out loud, but you do see it in text. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's finish it off. Looks like there's only one cell left. Suffix with architect, architecture, for instance. And then here we have Fort Blank, North Carolina, Fort Bragg. Sounds right to me. There we go. Okay, that is the Tuesday puzzle. Good solid Tuesday puzzle. Fun theme with, um, with the angle construction. A nice geometric arrangement of our theme, letters, and answers. I enjoyed that. And I suppose we didn't have a revealer, the explanatory clue. Didn't really need one, I suppose, because the puzzle sort of explains itself uh, eventually. And I suppose it did slightly help with some fill. Uh, that probably did make these answers a little bit easier, having that in there, and allowed me to uh, suppose that the latest was probably correct. This might be a tough region down here. I would I would think if you don't know computer, any, if you don't have really specific computer knowledge, because Unix isn't really. A, I've never used Unix, the operating system. I I know of it, but I've never touched it myself. So I don't. It would be pretty easy for me to imagine people not leaping to this very easily. Similarly, Java. I mean, people you hear about Java and the Strangely unrelated language, JavaScript, but, you know, I wouldn't fault anyone for not knowing that. And then here we've got a proper noun, the name of an actress, this viz, which, again, recognized it when I saw it. And I think my brain was scratching at it, but I didn't, I didn't get it without the crosses. A uh, bit of firefighting equip, equipment, axe, hopefully you'd get. Sometimes axe is spelled without an E. I don't know if that would cause any challenge, but. Um, and then julep, derby cocktail. I think probably people have heard of a mint julep. I don't know. Curious how, how people fared with this puzzle. I would bet that corner maybe gave people some trouble, but who knows? Do let me know. Uh, I thought this was fun. I liked the angle thing. And um, yes, that's, that's that for today's Tuesday. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the solve. If you do like this series, please do subscribe. If you subscribe, you will see these videos as they go up each day, typically each morning when there isn't some kind of uh, fatal error going on with the New York Times website. I wonder if they were running on Unix. Who knows? Uh, and if you would like to contribute to the long-term sustainability of this series, please consider tossing me um, a small monthly amount on my Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you will receive bonus videos as I record those as well as some other benefits, including, at some tiers, recognition at the end of these videos in appreciation of your very generous support. And indeed, today, I would like to recognize and thank Shantanu Bhatia and Joe Percy for their generous support, as well as, as always, the excellent Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of you, but also to everyone else who has backed the Patreon, but also everyone simply for watching this video, because that is, after all, the whole point of these things. So thank you so much for doing that. I hope you join me tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle, midweek difficulty before things get a little wackier on Thursday. But until then, I hope you have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.